God's house. Amen. If you got your Bible, you turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse number 1. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse number 1. If you're there tonight, some of you is not there yet. That's in the New Testament. Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse number 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'd like to talk to you tonight for a little while on a thought, what is God's perfect will for my life? What is God's perfect will for my life? It's a question I've often asked myself, and I hope to help you tonight maybe answer that question. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come to you tonight. Father, we thank you, God, for your word the very living breath of heaven. Father, we thank you for that word that is alive and lives inside of us. Father, we pray even now that that word will speak to our hearts tonight. Father, help us to grow and to learn in your word. Father, we pray even now, God, that you'll touch me, anoint me, God, and use me for your glory. In your name we do so humbly pray tonight. Amen. And amen. How many has ever thought, what is God's perfect will for my life? Maybe, maybe you've not thought the term perfect will, but what is God's will for my life? Anybody in here tonight ever thought about that? I have over and over and over again, preacher. One of my dear friends, preacher Mike, Haynes, who has helped cultivate me in this journey. And Preacher Tim and my daddy have all had a hand in helping me come up. You know what I'm saying? You know, they would whip me when I was wrong and tell me, hey, you don't need to go there no more, and you took that out of context, and you said this wrong. But that's all in growing, amen? Yeah. But I've often asked myself, what is God's perfect will for my life? Preacher Mike answered my question one night. Number one tonight, God's perfect will for your life is for you to be saved. Amen. 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 The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to contemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is God's perfect will for our life tonight is for us to be saved. If God didn't want it to happen, he wouldn't have said for the world to be saved. He wouldn't have bankrupt heaven for the world to be saved if it wasn't in his perfect will. Amen. Nothing happens by chance, amen. Everything is either God-ordained or God-allowed. Shout a big amen right there. You know, you say, well, the devil's working on me. Yeah, God allowed that. Nothing goes without God having a hand in it, amen. He's the creator of all things. He is the God of heaven, the God of earth. 
He is everything in between. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He said, he told Moses, he said, tell them that I am sent you. You say, who is I am? He says, I am everything. I am the bread. I am the life. I am the water. I am a well that springs up in the desert. Praise be unto God. I am tonight. I sent me by this way to tell you that God's perfect will for your life is for you to be saved. Amen. Praise God. I'm living up to one part of his will. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm Amen. saved tonight. I sanctified I on my way to glory. And I begin to read this and I begin to think about this. Now watch this. Let's read verse number one. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. I believe God's perfect will, number two for our life, is for us to be sacrificial. And I've sacrificed some stuff today. I'll just go ahead and say, maybe not as much as I could have, but I've sacrificed a few things today. Some people in this room know what I'm talking about. I'll tell you this much. I'm hungry. And at 12.01 tonight, I will have dinner. <laughs> but I've sacrificed some things today. But now watch this. Watch this. We are to learn of Christ, right? Does the Bible say that, preacher? Well, of course it does. He said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. Amen. Amen. And what was Christ if not sacrificial? Sacrificed all of heaven to endure the persecutions of earth. Moses said, I'd rather suffer the afflictions of God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> because this ain't going to last. This building right here will one day deteriorate. But what God has built will last forever. Let me tell you something. This world would go right on and right on. But one day God's going to destroy it. Because God created it a long time ago to last. Because everything he touched last time. Praise God that one day he touched me. And praise God I'll last. You say, how do you know, preacher? Because one day I'll step out of this body into a new body. Paul said to be absent from the body is to to be present with the Lord. Praise God. I'm saved Amen. tonight. Amen. But I need to be sacrificial. There's some things in my life that I could sacrifice. And I'll be honest with you tonight. Sometimes sacri sacrificing food is easier than sacrificing other things. Sometimes you'll sacrifice food to enjoy the things you want more. Is that really sacrificing? Boy, I'm preaching to myself. Is that really sacrificing? Are we really living a sacrificial life? Not to, not to kill ourselves and to present our bodies as a sacrifice on an altar, but to live as a sacrifice, ready to be at the beckon and call of Christ Jesus, ready to do exactly what he would have us to do. What is our job as a Christian? Can I ask you that tonight? What is our job? Maybe somebody tonight has an idea. If you've got an idea, speak up. We'll have a Q&A. Love one another. What's another one? Promote the gospel, the Great Commission. He said, go 
into the world and spread the gospel. Amen. Spread the good news. <laughs> well, I like that. Not just any kind of news, preacher, but the good news. Amen. And not just good news, but the good news. <laughs> Why? What is the good news tonight? Jesus came. <laughs> Jesus came. He died. He, he was laid in a borrowed tomb. And he got up on the third day and was seen of many witnesses for 40 days. And then he rose and went into the Father. And now he's seated at the right hand of the Father forevermore to intercede on mine and your behalf. That's the good news tonight. The good news is the world was going to hell in a handbasket and he come and saved us. Praise be unto the Lamb of God tonight. But I'll tell you this. There are things in my life I could sacrifice. Things in my life that I could sacrifice. Jackie. And what would happen if we were to get real and sincere with God to the point where we sacrificed until it hurt. Because you think of learning of Christ and how he sacrificed until it hurt. Not just sacrifice, but sacrifice until it hurt. Now, I'll tell you, some people in the house of God don't want to work because they have to sacrifice some of their precious time. Listen, time is of this world. There is no time in heaven. Amen? God works outside of time. Amen? Time is something that man has created. We come up with that a long time ago when the sun would set and darkness would fall upon the earth. We set up a time limit so we could uh, measure our days. Uh, but listen, God works outside of time. And we run and we chase our tails uh, to get stuff done in time. I don't know if I'm going to be done in time to make it to church tonight. I don't know if I'll have all my stuff done in time to make it to church tonight. I don't know if I'll be done in time to come help you at the church. I don't know if I'll be done in time to go out and visit this week. I don't know if I'll be done in time at my boys' boy baseball game by, to get out there and help with the young people. It's all about time. Would you sacrifice your time? What is God's perfect will for our life? To be sacrificial. To be saved. To be sacrificial. <clears throat> I've got a few more things I want to give you tonight. Let's look at this. Verse number 2. The very first line. And be not conformed to this word. Number 3 tonight. I believe God's perfect will for our life is to be separate. The Bible calls us a peculiar people. To be set, a, to be set apart from the rest. You know, I, I ain't afraid to be called a Jesus freak. And I ain't afraid to be called a Bible thumper. Because you know what? While everybody else's money is gone funny, praise God, I, I'll serve a God I, that owns the cattle of a thousand hills. <laughs> I might not have uh, all the money in the world, but praise God, my daddy's got everything. Uh, praise God, all the heaven's waiting on me. Uh, listen, tonight we need to be separate. You know, we're raising our young people to be popular. And not to be separate. There's nothing wrong with raising kids to be separate and to be different. But as parents, sometimes we're so worried about our children being different and it screws them over, it really does. 
because it messes them up uh, and they think that they constantly need to be uh, uh, looking for someone else's approval and not being different. Praise God. In a world uh, of pinks, be a blue. Amen. Be different. Praise God, I've been different all my life. I was homeschooled. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I've told you this before, and I'm going to tell you again because you probably done forgot. You probably, I know you did. I don't even think you was here when I told you. <laughs> I remember I was homeschooled. We was living in Hemingway. And my mama had found this loophole that homeschool kids could play for the public school system baseball team. But I had to go and try out like anybody else. And when I went out there, I gave it my all. I did. I mean, I ate grass, dove, did whatever I had to do to get on that team. And I made it. I was good enough, obviously, by the coaches. They thought I was good enough to be put on the team. I mean, there's probably 200 of us out there crying out. And only a certain amount of us made it on the team, and I was one of them. Praise God, I was excited. But you know what they say, everything that shines ain't gold. I remember getting around some of those boys, and I got introduced to some things, Brother Robert, that I was not privy to. Because those kind of things weren't talked about or discussed about or allowed at my mom and daddy's house. And I was criticized for being different because I wouldn't talk like me. <laughs> and I wouldn't do the same things as they would do. <laughs> but you know, there's some of them boys that ended up in jail. <laughs> I'm serious. They some of them that finally found the right road and they on the straight and narrow. But I'm telling you, it, it, there's nothing wrong with being different. But I'll tell you this, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy saying no. And it wasn't easy uh, backing up and taking a stand. Because sometimes when you stand, you'll stand by yourself. Listen, sometimes when you stand, you'll be alone, Jackie. You'll feel all alone like there's nobody else. Because in our minds, we look for people to stand beside us. But when we get in the Spirit, <laughs> we find that there's a... <laughs> that there's a bodyguard that stands with us, that stands bigger than we could ever stand by ourselves. And when we find that place standing by yourself, it don't worry you too much anymore. Why? Because you're standing for a call. David said, is there not a cause? And I believe there's a cause tonight. This world is teaching our young people to follow the culture. They are trying to ram into our kids' heads that you can be a cat and you can be a dog. I mean, seriously, now, 40, 50 years ago, if you come out and started meowing, they'd put you in the crazy house. But see, what they figure is if they can get enough nuts in the country, they'll vote a nut in the White House. And that's exactly where we at, amen? Praise God, I might be a nut, but I'm screwed on the right boat. Amen. I, I, I'll tell you this tonight. Listen, uh, we've got to take a stand. As a church, we've got to take a stand. Listen, it doesn't matter what the world wants us to do, Preacher Tim. It don't matter what the White House tells us we got to do. Listen, they tried to a couple of years ago tell us to shut the doors of the church. Yeah, they did. Yes, they did, and there were places that got fined for having church. But you didn't see Lowe's get fined for opening their doors. 
There's something wrong in this country, folks, and we need to be different. We need to be separate. I'll tell you something. We must be doing something right because they're scared of us. And I, I, I'll tell you this. They know that we have power more than we know we've got power. Because we come to the house of God and we act like, well, we're here once again. Like nothing can happen in the house of God. Listen, I, let, let me just tell you this, Robert. I'm going to talk to you for a minute, okay? If I was to go buy a witchcraft spell book and set it on that pulpit and open it up and say, I'm going to read y'all a couple of witchcraft spells, y'all's eyes would be big as quarters. But I read you the infallible Word of God, and you look at me like a cow looking at a new gate. Like there's no power in the Word of God. <laughs> Praise God, I like that old song, preacher. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. We've got the power. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we will not be defeated. Amen. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. It would do good for some of us to believe those words. It would do good tonight for some of us to believe that we do have the power. Amen. Some of our, I'm going to speak for myself. My brother might get saved if I truly believe that we have the power. Amen. Go on, preach to yourself, preacher. Something might happen in my life if I believe that, that, we, that we have the power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to move on. I've got a couple more things to give you. Let's read the latter half of verse 2. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I believe tonight that God's perfect will for our life is to be sound. And to teach sound doctrine. Amen. Praise God. And I, I'll tell you something, Brother Robert, I've learned. That church people don't know half what they should know about the Bible. Amen. Amen. Hold on, I, I'm going to tell you about it now. Because you come to church and you expect us to give you what you need instead of cracking open the Bible and figuring it out for yourself. Amen. The Bible didn't tell you, let the preacher work out your salvation. Come on. Come on. That's right. What did the Bible say? Work out thine own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. And how do you work out your salvation? You've got to know the Word. You've got to know what's in the Word. You need to know how to combat people that want to combat the Word. Amen. If some of y'all was to get in an argument, and it's a lot of church people I know was to get in an argument with somebody who wanted to debate the Word of God, you wouldn't know where to start. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Sometimes we just need a good scanning to know what we need to do. We're coming into a world where there are more questions asked today than ever. Amen. Amen. Why did Jesus come? What exactly was done in the six days of creation? Can you find, uh, let's see, can you find the book of Thaddeus in the Bible? Oh, yeah, I can take you to it. Come on, man. There ain't no book of Thaddeus in the Bible. <laughs> Y'all thought there was, didn't you? Thaddeus is in the Bible, though. Some of you knew that. Well, I'm telling you, we need to be sound. 
How? That, there's a lot of people that are that are uh, confused on their political views because they're not sound in the Word of God. There's a lot of people who are confused with their sexuality because they're not sound in the Word of God. What does the Bible say about confusion? God is not the author of confusion. Amen. Amen. Listen, we need to be sound in our doctrine that when somebody comes up and tries to reverse everything that we've ever been taught and everything we've ever been read, that we can stand and say, no, I know what it says. Uh, I know what it means when he said that. Uh, I know what he was saying when he said, for God so loved the world. That included me. That whosoever that was Thaddeus, that Thaddeus uh, could be saved. That Thaddeus could live forever. Uh, that Thaddeus didn't have to die and go to hell. That was for me. Amen. He'd have done it all just for me. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to be sound tonight. God help me to be sound. Let me tell you something. I'm young. Real young. I'm 23. My wife is 27. And she's still raising me. One of these days I'll come off the bottle, praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Why, they think it anyway. Well, I know what the word says, but she ain't quite sound yet. <laughs> She's in here tonight. I ain't going to look at her. But... Mm. We need to be sound, praise the Lord. But I'll tell you this, I, and I'll hit on this. And I'll go home and probably fight, but <laughs> in some of our churches, we've got more women being the high priest of the home than the men. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I ain't preach on it because I'm not the pastor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't get paid to do this hardly. <laughs> this ain't my full time job. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But we don't. We've got more women being the high priest of the home because we've got ungodly men. <laughs> mm. and, and, and I'm just going to say this just for laughs and giggles, okay? We've got more women who are the high priest of the home because they don't know how to submit their husbands. That's not a popular subject, but I'll preach it anyway. Because I was told to be separate and to be peculiar. And y'all looking at me like I am just that. <laughs> but I'm very serious tonight. Now, now, don't misinterpret me. The Bible does not say to rule your house with an iron fist. But it calls for due benevolence. And it calls for the wife uh, to respect the husband when the husband deserves respect. Amen. Amen for us to submit uh, ourselves to our husbands uh, just as Christ submitted himself to the Father uh, and just as the church submits itself to Christ. Amen. It's biblical. It is. You can like it, lump it, do whatever you want to with it. It's sound. Amen. It is sound tonight. And you can be upset with me and not like me after this, and that's okay. And you might, you might. I, don't, I, 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 love, I still love you. But it's sound tonight. And it's sad to see we've got sometimes more women running the church than we do the men. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I need to shut up. <laughs> I need to shut up. <laughs> the first decision a woman ever made doomed us all. That is the truth. You go read it. 
the first instance you'll ever find the Bible says, do not add to or take away from the Word of God. You go and you read from Genesis chapter 2 to Genesis chapter 3 and find out if God's Word wasn't changed somewhere in between that. Because it was, that's the danger of adding to and taking away from the Word of God. All of humanity was doomed. Not only do we need to be sound, I am moving on. Go on and laugh, honey. Go on and laugh. It's too hot to fish. Mm. Romans 12, verse number 3. The Bible says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, mm. but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man a measure of faith. Number five, I believe we need to be selfless. Got too many big eyes in the church. God help me if I'm one. Too many people want their left hand to know what their right hand is doing. Too many people want to pat on the back and want everybody to know, hey, look at what I did. Look at what I've sacrificed. See, let me just go ahead and tell you, if you've got to tell people what you've sacrificed, you've not done much. The Bible says men who have men's applause, they've already got their reward. Their reward's not been laid up in heaven. But it's those who have done deeds that nobody else knows about. Great is their reward. Praise God, let's be selfless. I believe that's God's perfect will for our life is to be selfless because Christ was selfless. But lastly tonight, read on down in verse number 11. <clears throat> Not slothful in business. But read it like this. But fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Lastly tonight, I believe God's perfect will for our life is to be sold out. What is God's perfect will for my life, preacher, to be saved? God's perfect will for our life is to be sacrificial. God's perfect will for our life is to be separate, to be sound. We need to be separate. But we need some people to be sold out. You ever heard somebody say, you can't sell nothing you ain't sold on? How are you going to give the gospel if you ain't sold on it? We need some people to be sold out. Man, if we had everybody in this building just sold out, just sold out for God, my God, we, wouldn't, we could tear this building down and build one three times the size of this place because there wouldn't be a person you would pass you wouldn't tell about Jesus. You would preach the gospel. You would spread that gospel to them and give it to them because why? You're sold out. You're selfless. It's not about you. The conversation don't have to be about you, but your conversation is of heaven. <laughs> your conversation is of Christ and not what you've done, but what he did. Yeah. Listen, I preach that message because he shines. I don't have to. And the whole, the whole point of that message is that we are to be a reflection of His life. He shines brighter than we could ever shine. And the closer we are to Him, the greater the reflection, the greater the light. But we've got to be sold out tonight. What is God's perfect will for? Be safe, to be set, to be sold out.
We need that. We want our church to be different. We want our church to live up that, to that slogan. A church alive is worth the drive. We need to be sold out, Brother Robert. We need to sell out to the gospel. We don't, listen now, don't sell out to the church because the church won't take you to heaven. Amen. Sell out to God, amen. amen. Sell out to Christ. And praise God, share the gospel. What is God's perfect will for my life? What a thought. And he tells us <laughs> his perfect will for our life. Many times I've sat and I've thought, Brother Robert, what is God's perfect will for my life? My God's perfect will for my life to be there and to be there and to be here. But I think we get a lot of that confused a lot of times, preacher. Because morally, and when the rubber meets the road, God's perfect will for our life is to just share the gospel. I don't really think He cares where we do it at. I'm telling you the truth tonight. I don't think He cares if we're in California or Mississippi or New York City. But as long as we share the gospel, we're doing His perfect will. And to do it selflessly and sacrificially. Praise God, what a thought. You think on that. What is God's perfect will for my life? Take the broken message that I've given you tonight and think on it. Maybe it'll help you as much as it's helped me on what God's will is for my life. Heavenly Father, as we come in tonight, God.